Hey everyone and welcome to this A74 menu walkthrough. There's two parts to this. The first one is a really quick walkthrough of the menu itself, no detail. And then I'll go into detail in the ones that really matter, right? So there's the menu here. And there's seven of these, by the way. So there's my menu, there's the shooting, exposure color, focus, playback, network, and setup. And that's it, right? So let's go into a little bit more detail on the shooting one. There's the image quality, there's a the media, the file, where you'd be able to, I guess, have a look at the different types of files and the folder structure you can set, etc. The shooting modes that you've got available to yourself. Um, and this is where you can save different camera settings into different memory modes. There's the USB streaming, which is a new feature for this camera. Um, the drive mode, whereas you want to, you know, continuous high, low, single. The shutter, you want an electric, mechanical, image stabilization, zoom, and a shooting display. And that's all of the settings inside of the shooting menu. Then we get onto the exposure color, where you can set the ISO in the exposure, the exposure compensation, the metering mode, but you want a spot metering mode, etc. And if you've got flash, all the settings related to the flash, white balance, the color and tone, which don't really, you know, mean much if you're shooting raw, but if you've got JPEG, then you can set that here. And then you've got the zebra, the zebra, the zebra, zebra display. Um, and that's it. That's everything inside of the exposure color. Now the focus mode, right? See, this is pretty quick. Uh, I'm going to go into the details later down the video, but I just want to show you what's inside of here. There's the autofocus, manual focus, the focus area, the different type of face, eye autofocus, focus assistant, and the peaking displays it's got. Next is the playback. This is where you can decide how you want to play back all of the footage, video, photos you've taken, and whether you want to delete it, how you want to delete it, whether you want to edit it, I would not recommend it, and the playback options, etc. That's all inside of the playback. And the network is how you're gonna connect this camera. Listen, this camera has a lot of different ways you can connect to your phone, your ecosystem, whatever you may have. The one I wouldn't recommend is a wide LAN connection. Um, not sure why you wanna do that, but hey, this gives you that option. And that is everything that's inside of the network menu setting. Um, airplane mode, interesting one. And finally, the setup. This is where you can set up the camera date, what area you live in, but more importantly, all the customizable buttons, you know, the top, the bottom, etc. You can set them through here, all the dials, all the buttons that you can see on the screen, see or not on the screen, etc. All of that is possible here. And yeah, this is a touch screen as well. So all of the settings related to whether you want it to behave like a touch screen or not are also inside of the setup section. So it's quite an important one. And that's really it. Right, this is a, a very quick four minute video on all of the menus and the setup that you have in the seven, seven of these different menus. Right, technically it's seven, but you know there are eight options here because if you switch from the photos to the video mode, you will see that the second item in this menu goes from photo to video. Now here you can see that the image quality it, and, the, and the items that are shown inside of it are slightly different because it's all video related, but the rest of the menu items remain the same. Now, this is where I'd like to pause and take a breath because that was really quick. And if you just wanted to see what was inside of these menu items, this is the call for you. Thank you very much for watching. But if you're interested in some of the more intricate details within the menu items, then uh, let's do it. Now you will see that the pace of my voice has changed a little bit. I hope it's a little bit slower because we're gonna look at the different type of options you're given when you select the photos and the image quality, right? So you can decide whether you want to shoot JPEG in HIFA or whether you want to shoot JPEG and RAW or just RAW. And once you select RAW, what type of file do you want it to be? Whether it's compressed, lossless compressed, uncompressed, um, and all of the settings around that are here. But one cool thing, if you don't know what any of these mean, you can always just click the delete button and you'll get some information related to what that menu item is and what that means. So if it ever, ever is a stage that you get this camera and you're unsure of what something means, just press the delete button and you know, it'll give you a snippet of what that option actually means. Now, 
we look at the file format and the movie settings, but I would rather change them when we actually switch the camera over from the photo to the video mode. But this is a great example of what you might not know what a long exposure NR means. And this camera, when you press the delete button, will let you know, oh, that's whether you want the camera to reduce the noise automatically or not. And that's pretty good. So that is where I really like this menu system and how easy it is for me to use and understand because obviously this is a new camera system for me. So I don't know what every little detail will do. And so I'm glad that they've put this option where I can just have a look at what the actual option means. But getting back to the menu itself, we've got the camera memory modes. Now this is obviously something really interesting available for most camera brands, right? You set your camera to a particular setting that you like. In this case, you know, 1 over 1 60th, f1.8, and now I wanna save that to one of the preset uh, settings. So there's one, two, and three. And in this case, I can set all of the settings that are here onto that preset, and that's it. Every time I turn the dial to number three, it'll save all of those details and it'll bring them up, and that's great. Now, this is something new, and this is something really cool. I've got to try it out. I mean, I don't know when I will use this personally for my work, but you can USB stream this as your main camera, which is so cool. Um, and maybe this is something when you're, you know, streaming Twitch, maybe not Zoom, but it's something that's possible. And maybe if you want to look really professional, that's what you do. Um, getting into the drive modes. Now, this is where you can see you've got the continuous, the single, a timer, and then you've got the bracket modes as well. Um, so these are all the different settings that are available to you in the drive mode when, you're, you've got, when you've got it on your photo setting. And this is the bracket ordering, right? So whether you want it to go from zero negative plus or you want to go negative zero plus when you're shooting the exposure bracket shots, which, you know, you'd have one dark shot, one really light shot and one in the middle, and then you kind of make a composite of those three and then make a really beautiful HDR shot, as one would like to call it. It's got time lapse. And this is really cool because you can see if I took 9,000 shots, my God, it'd take seven hours, which I don't have. Um, but it's got different type of shutters. Obviously, it's got the mechanical and the electronic, unlike the Z9, which just has a mechanical. But this one has a mechanical and, sorry, electronic. This one has a mechanical and an electronic shutter, which is great. Uh, you can decide which one you want to use. And this is one of the really cool features that I really like, and a lot of cameras are kind of adapting on it and, and taking this on, is this variable aperture, sorry, variable shutter speed, uh, where you can decide, just fine tweak it a little bit more. Doesn't come in very handy when you're doing, like, you know, photos, but when you're doing filming videos, you know, when you're taking videos, that slight change really helps because you can then adjust the shutter speed to match the light, that the room that you're in and the light that's shining on it, and then you don't get those flickers. So that's really cool. Um, and moving on to the different type of um, shooting displays you've got, you know, again, when you get this in your hand, you're gonna get a lot of time to decide how you want to set up this camera. And you can set it to your liking, uh, like I've done for myself. Uh, but that's the shooting menu. Now I wanted to just change it over to what this looks like when you've got, uh, got this on the video mode. Um, Obviously, one of the biggest things this camera gives you, the a7 III, is uh, the ability to shoot in 4K, different types of 4K. And these different codecs mean how quickly does your memory card fill up? Um, XAVCS is the one that I go with because it's, you know, contains reasonable detail. And from what I hear, the SI mode is just unbearable and super, super expensive, generally for the camera and for my pocket as well. So the XAVCS here you can see I can shoot in 422, 10-bit, 8-bit as well. But this is where it gets interesting. The SI mode, if I get it up, crank it up to 60 frames per second, it will take 600, oh my god, the record settings, 422, 10-bit, it's gonna require a CF Express card, right? This is just not gonna work with the SD card that I've put in there, which is why some of the settings and the warning screens that it comes up with mean that just don't do it if you've got a slightly, you know, V60 memory card rather than a V90. Don't experiment with it. I'm not doing it, but yeah. Now, 
Another really cool thing, which I think most camera companies do and, and something that I expected to be on the a7 III, but you know, it's really cool and worth showing. I've got a 35 mil camera, but with the APS-C mode on, I can turn it into a 50 mil, which is really cool. And something else you can do on top of this is you can add another 1.5x digital zoom, which is, you know, which means that this is actually a 2x zoom if you do it on APS-C sensor, though that's a 70 mil lens. So the distance you get there for a single lens, it's, it's really cool and it's, you know, really worthwhile. But that's some of the settings that are available when you're in the video mode compared to the photo mode. But now we get into the picture profiles and you know it's got the baked in picture profiles from no picture profile to picture profile one to PP11. And when you go into each one of these, you can actually edit what gamma setting you want it to be, whether it's S-Log3, S-Cinetone, just Cine1234. Uh, each of those really gives a different profile, like it says, to your video and the output of that. Uh, and then you can kind of take that away um, onto your machine and edit it how you how you like. Obviously, if you set it to S-Log3, you're going to get the highest quality image, lots of detail, which you can take back and do what you wish or just use a, a LUT from one of your favorite creators as well. So that's also an option that's available. But these are the picture profiles that are available. I'll be making a separate video on the different picture profiles and what they mean for you when you're filming with them. Um, so give me a thumbs up if you would like to see it. Even if you don't, I'm going to do it regardless. <laughs> and finally, there's the soft, soft, the soft skin effect where you can make me look beautiful, which is, you know, a lot to ask from a camera. But it'll just smoothen out your skin tones depending on what setting you've got it to. That's all the exposure comp, etc. And then we go on to the focus settings, right? You can get the single shot, automatic, continuous, uh, DMF. What is DMF? Well, DMF is after focusing with autofocus, you can make fine adjustments to the focus manually. Right, I get it, right? So you can uh, set it to a particular focus by just, you know, half pressing. And then you can just move it around a little bit with the, the focus ring. Sure, makes sense to me. Um, so that's one of the other options. And then you've got the manual focus as well. So a lot of different ways to focus on this camera, like most of these cameras, but um, I usually just, I've set it to automatic AF at the moment. I haven't really changed it because I haven't had much chance to play with it. Um, but that's um, autofocus, manual focus, the different type of focus areas you've got. You've got the wide, which is gonna cover the entire screen um, to the, you know, the spot focus where you've got a single spot and then you can move around the in about 90% of the screen. It doesn't go edge to edge. Um, and decide what spot you want it to be on and it'll just focus for you on that particular single spot. Um, at the moment, I've just set it to wide. But again, depending on what my camera settings are, it might change to single uh, or not. But now we get into the nitty gritty, really the, the more important things around the IAF and what you want it to be, whether you want it to be an animal, a bird, a human. I've got a a shortcut here, obviously, which is how I'm changing it. Uh, but this is this is great, right? I can I can decide whether I want whether I'm, whether I'm looking at a human or an animal or a bird. Although I think a bird is an animal, but you know, it gives you a little bit more fine grain control on the autofocus to decide. Hey, that's the eye of a, an eagle, and I want to focus in on that. So that's great. I haven't tried out the human, well, I've tried it the human, I've been tried it the bird or the animal autofocus, but I'll get to that and I'll let you know how that behaves. And that's it. We've got the other parts of the menu, which I'm not really going to go into because, you know, not really worth it. But more importantly, when you get into the setup, this is what really matters. How do you set up your camera? And it gives you the option to really customize this to your liking. You know, it's got about seven switches on the back that you can customize, the top, um, the front, there is one, obviously. So um, this is where you'd be able to customize every single one of your dials to, to your liking. Um, and just to give you an example, obviously this one is the aperture, and I've got the shutter speed, then I've got the ISO, and then the uh, exposure comp is the real. Uh, and that, these are just my settings, um, and you can change them. Now, this is really interesting. You can have separate settings for your video to your photos, but you can see I've got most of them to follow the same as my uh, photo settings with the exception of the movie shooting because I want that button 
recording button to record when I press it when I'm in the movie mode. So that's that. Um, again, the custom uh, key settings, these are the same ones that we've just gone through on another menu. They just put it on a separate level for you. And another really important one is the menu setting, right? This function menu that you see here, uh, again, is different depending on whether you're on the photo mode or the video mode. So technically, you've got 12, 24 items there. It's 12 for the photo and 12 for the video, which is really cool. You can change it to your liking again so that when you're filming, it's one thing. And then when you're shooting photos, it's completely different. And you can, again, pick from not everything, I would say, but there's, you know, a fair few number of items here that you can basically customize so that you can have quick, quick access to them. So that's it. That's the function menu setting and quick access for you to get to wherever you like, whatever you want to shoot, however you want to shoot. You can kind of set this here and you're ready to go. So there you have it. These are some of the key options that I use and I have changed so far within the last week, but um, there's just so much to do here in the menu setting and I can make a really long video, not a 10 minute one, but a slightly longer one, which um, can go into detail about every single one of these, but that's really boring. Um, I think, at least I hope I've covered some of the main ones, um, maybe not in as detail as I'd like them to be, but just give you an idea of what's possible, where, where everything sits. If you've forgotten, you can go back to the start of this video and in the first three minutes, you're gonna find out where every single um, item lives. So, you know, there's that. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, just give me a thumbs up or subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.